there is HTML and there is HTML closing tag. So every uh, tag, most of the tags in HTML are closed and they enclose some content in there. Okay, all right. So you just, yeah. yeah. So there is this HTML tag and there is the HTML tag being closed. And in this these HTML tags, there is uh, two tags. There is head, head being started, head being closed, and there is body, body being started and body being closed. So this is the basic structure. Like any tags, tags are just things that contain stuff, right? So some do contain and some don't. And the tags which contain stuff are usually opened and then closed like this with a like slash kind of thing, okay? Uh, so this is the basic structure and there is a tag title. Now we'll see. Uh, let's see the output of this uh, web page. Now you'll see that in here, you'll see, can you see the uh, name of the tag or my annotating thing is covering it? Yeah, we can, so we can. Okay, you can. So you'll be seeing document in it most probably because the title tag contains text document. So whatever is, is in there in the title tags, title starting and title closing, it will be it, it will be the name of your tag. Okay, so I can set it as my portfolio. Okay, and I save it and you'll be seeing my portfolio. Can you? I think you can. Uh, hello, uh, Manav, uh, you are leaking your, your type. Uh, Okay. Is it not a good thing to do? Uh, uh, no, 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 it's uh, fine. Actually, 127.0.0.1 is the home IP. It's the common IP on most home machines. So it's not a problem. Okay. Yeah, I think so too. I have seen a lot of people's ID on tutorials. Yeah, this is the local host IP. Yeah, it's, a, it's, I thought it is the IP, it's yeah. It has subnetting, so it's not a problem. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, you can keep discussing stuff. It is just normal session, so I appreciate that you uh, talked about that. So yeah, you can see my portfolio in there. Uh, now there is this head that contains all the boring info that most mostly you don't care about because it is just info that uh, you don't do anything about. So the thing, the main thing is this body. Uh, the all content that you put in your website is in the body. So if we just talk about what is the role of HTML and CSS, like HTML is more or less like it will set what kind of content is there in your website, while CSS is like how how, how it's going to look. So right, also, yeah, hmm. yeah so you get to know. Uh, so they, we can add a lot of tags in the body. So everything that happens in HTML is using tags and this that kind of stuff. So the thing, the let's go back to the design and see what is the first thing that we have to do. So there is this nav bar kind of thing. Okay. So there is this logo that I have a picture. The, here is PM logo.png. This is that picture. And, and uh, here is the text home about me and projects. And these are links. And these are little grayed out and they can shine when you hover over them. And this is some fancy stuff, maybe. I don't know if we'll be able to cover that or not. So let's uh, go to this, like, let's make this nav bar thing. So there are things called, there are divs. Divs are basically boxes. So so that you can handle stuff better and you can group the, a group with some pieces of content, you use div and uh, the, uh, let's use a div. And also the thing about VS Code is that you can just write div and you can just tap enter. And, and, and it will uh, form, like open and close the tag for you. And so this is the div and whatever we do in it, like uh, we can start with home about the projects. Uh, now there are links. Links can be used uh, by A tags. A, so these are the links tags. You can define links using there. You can just uh, say Amazon. 
and I can put in it uh, HTTPS www.amazon.in and we'll save it and we'll see what happens. So here a blue find a link pops up that if you just open up amazon.in opens up. So the thing in here that you should notice href is uh, the place where you store the link of the uh, store the URL of the link and this is the link text. Okay, so these are indeed links. So this is the home link. Uh, we used this link to go to an another website. We came to amazon.in basically. But what we want to do with, with these links is that whenever I tap on about me, it just you know scrolls uh, down to about me. When I tap to projects, it scrolls the screen down to projects. So this is called internal linking and we will uh, learn that too. So we'll keep the HRF uh, empty for now because we don't have a location to go to for now because we don't have the elements down there. Uh, okay. Uh, so let's only keep the text home. And we can use A, sorry, A, and we can say about me. Then we can use A and we can add in the text projects. Also, these are caps in caps. Okay, so these are three links that uh, are in our day. And uh, the thing with this is that if you can see, like, if we just zoom in a bit, you can see that if this is a box, if this whole thing is a box, can I annotate or something? Yeah, if this is a box, if this is a box, uh, like, just don't mind my poor then we can think of this element as a box as well. That is just on the, uh, what do you say, left side of this box. And we can consider this logo as an element in itself, as a box in itself, which is on the right side of, the, of this box. So it will be better if we can think of these as boxes and I'll clear annotating. Uh, yeah, clear all things, okay. Yeah, so this was a box and I'll show you how this looks first of all. And this looks like just a uh, plain text. Okay. So now we can also start doing a little bit of CSS as well. We'll add a new file, style.css and uh, there are the CSS, how CSS works is uh, you just select uh, some tags, some uh, elements from HTML and you can select in uh, a lot of ways. Like you can say that please do formatting on this, on all the divs, you can say that. Or you can say do formatting on divs with the name of something, something. And uh, that, that can be a way. And uh, you can use tag names to format, as I said, div or you can give elements some ID. As ID says that it is a unique thing, like a school ID, it is unique and only a student will have a have one, one ID. So I can say that this is ID one, okay, just name it ID one, or I can give this a class as well. Like uh, also this is pretty good analogy of uh, the school thing that a lot of people can have same class, but one, but ID can always be, should always be unique. So, all right. So this is maybe class one. And then when, then you, we can use uh, a lot of ways to format this div. Uh, we can use this div name. We can use the ID of the div. We can use the class of the div. And you'll understand it better when we'll go ahead. So let's give it an ID of something maybe. We can give it a uh, links because it contains links. Okay, we will save it. And what we can do right now is we denote, uh, we represent these this hash, represent ID names. So we can use hash, links, our ID name, and we can use these curly braces. 
Now all the formatting properties and all these property values will come in these uh, curly braces. So uh, I am uh, basically uh, just uh, defining the properties of this div with ID links. Okay. So let's set a background color. So property for background color is I just uh, wrote back and uh, VS Code start suggesting me stuff. So there is background color. So the overall syntax of a uh, CSS properties and their values is like you just type the name of the CSS property, then colon, and then there is this property value. I can say red. Okay. Or let's choose a light color, pink. And I have to make sure that I end the line with semicolon. Uh, this is the way uh, how the compiler will know, how the executor will know that the line has stopped. Okay. So now let's go to our code and let's wait. Yeah, huh, yeah. So you must be wondering that how is this magic or something? Uh, this uh, thing will work with this. Uh, so the thing is, we have a link in the style sheet. So link, there is this tag link. And uh, you can learn about these in full depth when you just get back home. So these things is the link the relationship is style sheet. These CSS are style sheets and href is our file name style.css. So basically what we did here is we attach our style.css with this HTML file. So now we built up a relation between our HTML and CSS. So now our CSS will work. Okay, so now we get back. Now we see the whole background color of this div is pink. And uh, an interesting thing to notice is the div covered up the whole width of the screen that was available. So that is also an interesting thing to notice. And uh, now what we can do is also the whole HTML is in a box form. So a good thing, a, a good way to, you know, visualize your space is that you give every each element a background color so that you can see it as boxes, legit boxes, and you can work with it better. So now let's move on to other stuff. So this was our div, and we want another div to enclose this. Div, this is our, let's give it an ID, nav bar, navigation bar, nav bar. So, Also, if you, if you have some doubts, you can always make me stop and ask me. Uh, so we so the structure of the file so far is navbar, and in there, there are some links. All right. So let's add a logo as well, the logo that is here. All right. So here is the logo. How we add the images? We just do, I, it's, it's an IMG tag. I did IMG and enter. And there, these are some attributes of IMG. SRC, ALT. And in SRC, what you do is you define the name or and the uh, name or URL of the image. So in our case, it's m-logo.png. Okay, and we can skip alt all for now. Okay, so now we can see in here. Okay, the logo is white, so it is not visible. So we need to give a background color to this IMG maybe. So we can see it. So let's choose IMG. Now you'll, now you'll see that we use IMG tag directly because it was, there was only one IMG that we need to, uh, you know, format. So here is the thing. Uh, now we'll give it a background color of red maybe. Now you can see that the logo was added as well. Uh, okay. Hmm. So it's cool now. So we have a div nav bar and in there, there is a box links which contains all the links and there is an image. So now we want all this to be in a line. So the thing with this is, this is uh, like blocking the whole 
area that it that is available to it, the whole bit that is available to it, the pink thing and the pink thing is the links uh, box okay so we want int it to get better and the property that we can use for it is display property so display property decides how you uh, adjust with the content adjust with the you know screen yeah okay hmm. so how you adjust with the content so the display that is there for divs for divs by default is block we don't want it to block we want it to be in line we want it to cover up as much space as it needs we don't want it to cover up the full space so now we have the structure so now they are in line so we are making a little progress now what we want is we want this to be at the at right and we want this to be at left so it is already at left we just want this to get get to right so we can say uh also we also need to make this in line to uh we can use float float right so the property name the float property name is pretty intuitive in its way that it will make it float to the right so it is flu yeah, like so now we have basic structure of the nav bar but still it is not a lot it's not at all looking nice so we need to work on that okay yeah hmm. so but before that uh, let's uh, get done with the whole things that we need to do now you can also imagine it again as another box which is centered vertically if we consider this a screen then it is just centered vertically right and it is on the right uh, horizontally so we'll go with that so this was the nav bar now let's give it give it a space and make the div which can, which will contain our which is the in basis uh, home we can name this as home div home info home info maybe so what will it contain is it will contain my name the person's name manav sespal and we can use sigma to just copy paste stuff i could have hmm. okay and what else we want here is also there are headings uh you can just write down uh, content in any way you want but uh, you can use headings as well to you know just make your content look bigger you can uh, okay so we'll use h1 here h1 is basically uh what you call heading 1 so this will this is the biggest heading possible so there are a lot of levels in there h1 h2 h3 h4 h5 h6 and so this is there okay so it automatically got bigger than the rest of the text so that is the h1 there uh and now we want some simple text we can use br to add a line break this br was to add a line break now i'll show you how it was useful for us the next content was shifted to a next line so that was the thing there like uh okay yeah mhm mm so here is this thing and we can also color this diff to visualize stuff better we have the id home info and what we can do is give it a background color of anything we just want to visualize so here is that diff all right so we now we want it to be centered across the screen like across the 
uh, height, you would say. So how we can do that is, Yeah. Hey Manu. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. One doubt. Uh, that like the first div was having that uh, logo, right? Now this this is uh with your name and the description that is a different div. How is it mm -hmm. uh, coinciding with the previous one, the logo one? It shouldn't the thing it is be... that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm, the thing is that the image is in line. Uh, we said the image is in line. So the in line the image being in line means that it will be there with the text like the uh, top of the image will be with the text and it doesn't matter if it's just flowing out of the div or not so it is basically inside this div but it is bigger than this div so it will it is just looking to be flowing out like uh wait a second i'll make this nav part there mm, nav part and we'll give it a background color of f1 maybe so here is this like it is lined with that div and if we just make there is a property called width and not height we need height height and we can make its height to maybe what will be the appropriate height for it now for 60 pixel maybe so 60 pixel seems cool and we can decrease the size of this image uh, the height to 60 pixel as well so that oh, it looks man up, man up, man up. Uh, yep, yep. sorry to interrupt but uh, i'll just make the host uh, i got to leave because it's an emergency so yep, sure. once you're done just end the meeting for everyone cool yeah yeah cool yeah okay bye yeah so now it will look more intuitive now that it is just in that day but the thing was that it was too small to fit that image so okay. it just overflowed yeah so okay now what we can do is the first page is ready and the content wise not the appearance it looks ugly for now so we can uh, put all this content in a separate dev on its own like we can for this example this figma uh, we can imagine this whole this whole thing this whole thing is one div which is which is the home div and then we can imagine this as another div which is the about me div because we want this to be this to cover the whole page okay and we configure we can configure this to be in another div so these are the stuff uh let's go back to where we were so basically what i want to say is will move this whole first page thing into another div which we can call the home page all right uh we'll cut it and div uh we can give this an id home and we can just copy the contents in here so yep Also, now the let, uh, let me show you what home looks like. Home background color. Let's keep it something blue wallet maybe. Okay, so you see uh, that the blue wallet is the home uh, is the home thing, but uh, it contains everything but still you see the little part of it because only that is visible Other, otherwise all the elements cover the par other parts but what we wanted was the home page home page to cover whole height so how we can make that happen is we just say that i want to make its height 100 bh so there is this uh, unit uh css unit bh bh is viewport height so whatever the is the viewport height the thing will be of that size so i made the height 100 bh and now we'll see that it covered almost the whole what do we say the whole viewport in a way also the thing you see here 
that there is a weird white space here. Do you see? So this weird things happen because uh, HTML is pretty inconsistent. HTML CSS is pretty inconsistent about uh, the default margins and paddings. Like some elements have zero margins and paddings by default, and some elements have a lot of margin paddings. So it, that is pretty inconsistent. So what we like to do, uh, what we like to do is use the universal selector. The star is that it will select all the tags in the tags in the HTML, like the body, HTML, every tag that is there in the HTML, it will select all and give one property to everything. So we can say that we want the margins. So these are the margins, the thing that is separating the whole HTML. If we, if we consider this thing, this whole window that is available to us, as the HTML's body, then these are the contents. Then the there is some stuff between the HTML and the content, and we don't want that. So all the possible stuff that can cause this issue is the padding. We'll learn about padding really soon. And margin, uh, zero pixel. So all right. So now you see there is no white thing over it so uh, we, i just removed all the margin and all the padding from all the elements so whenever we will we will need margin we will add it we just don't want the default margins that's it so now let's go to the next thing now you see this covers the whole page so now let's make another div uh let's make another div of id what do you say about me? About me. Hmm. So it just created a div with ID about me. So now what we need in about me is, okay. What we need in about me is, uh, we need, okay. So there is this about me heading, which is centered horizontally. And then there is a box which contains all the stuff. So let's go with H1, H1 again. Uh, we, we shouldn't use H1 more, but here is H1 about me, all right? And uh, what else do we need? We need uh, that this, and now this is pretty visible that we need another div because here is another box in, inside a box, right? So we'll make an, another box about, about me content me dev we made a dev and we'll give it an id about me content all right so there is this thing and we can type gibberish in there and let's see how it looks for now so okay now this is the second page and we need to uh, decorate it a little so First of all, let's give everything a background color so that we can visualize stuff better. Hmm. So what was our elements? It was one about me, the I, uh, the dev with ID about me, we will give it a background color of brown maybe. So here it is, the whole dev was given a color about me now in this we had an heading we had a heading uh which is let's give it something now h1 h1 okay okay let's give this an id about me heading mm, so Let's select that about me heading and give that a background color as well so that we can visualize it better. Really good. All right. So here the heading is. Uh, also, now let's introduce ourselves to some text properties. There is a text property called text align. So text align, and we can use it to just do the all the normal stuff that we do with uh, text align. 
legs weaken center right chest defined left right glute center for now we will see that our thing is centered on its own so this is pretty nice and now we can do something with this gibberish we have just our bottle content about me so if if you think it looks pretty ugly right now we'll remove all the background colors and the only the main background color will remain this just to visualize stuff better okay so about me content now we can give this uh, a background color of something also now exactly how we did something with the home info with the where is this yeah home thing let me give it a height 100 bh so that it covers a whole window okay so the exact th same thing we'll do with about me which contains all the about me things and it will give it an height of 100 bh again so here is this first window of that and now there is the second window about me and we need to you know space some stuff out because it is just sticking to the upper thing now and i think this is a good time to introduce margins and paddings so every element that is there has a property css property margin and padding so margin and padding basically are it is a it it, it just talks about spaces so one second let me have a sip of water so yeah what are margins and paddings margin is basically how a one one element is spaced out with respect to a second element so if i were to visualize it better i'll show you some image in the internet uh, margins and padding in css yep so let's say, take example of this the thing is this is a text content geeks for geeks okay and this is the div or this is the box that we use so how the content will be spaced out inside the div inside the div with respect to this uh, with respect to the box box border is the padding like it is spaced out by 30 pixels or something okay so it is the padding but how this box will be spaced out with the other elements around it around it is the margin so like uh, if i were to say let me annotate a little bit hmm. so here is this box and here is this box and here is this box in our html file so how they you know react around them so i'll say that this box has 100 pixel margins so the distance that is just the way of defining uh, how much different the distance is there between the other elements on the screen but if i suppose i have a t in there and i want this t to not stick with this like the way i can use it uh, maybe i should use a bit screen yeah so the way i can write text in this box is i can write t like this or i can write t like this like it is pretty spaced out uh, around the borders so this is what padding is the space between the text content and the stuff is the padding in that kind of stuff so we'll just end it clear clear all things okay yeah so now we see where are the problems in our portfolio site that this is pretty stick to the upper thing so what we can do is uh, let me show you uh, if we add there is the, here is the thing if we add a padding in it padding of maybe 40 pixels so, so pixels is a, another css unit that is like a fixed unit and so if you see the content is pretty spaced out in the box now because we increase the padding so i think it is pretty self explanatory and if we do a margin 
40 pixel instead then there will be a difference margin 40 pixel was like how much space this element will have around it like here is this 40 pixel here is this 40 pixel so that thing so we can go with uh, anything we'll go with padding for now so here is this thing also we can selectively add padding like padding top like we want more padding at the top so we can use maybe uh, 130 pixel okay so here is this about me or 180 pixel will be better yep 80 pixel and now we now the next goal is with respect to this design there is this about me we have made it and we want it now we want this green box to look like this like have some space on, on the ends and have a border so let's go with that here is this blue box and now we can what, what we can do is we need space around it so we'll use margin so margin uh, margin maybe 30 30 40 pixel maybe 40 pixel okay so here is this 40 pixel margin mm -hmm. now we want it to have some width uh, sorry height let's give it a height of 400 pixel for now 400 pixel so it having increased its height now and let's increase it a little bit more 500 pixel so here is it so okay now if we remove also there is a property called border and there are not one but a lot of properties for border there is border radius and border top a, 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 a lot of stuff we can use a border width one and we can set up border width maybe five pixels uh, okay border color border color we will use white sir which level uh, editor is this uh this is vs code yeah uh, okay so here is a border color and border width and uh, what else do we need border style to it's solid so here we got our border so the thing i did is i said the border color is white border width to something you can experiment with it and i said the border style is solid there are a lot of options in here you can use solid or something let me show you what are the options style there are options you can use a dash dotted i'm going to use solid for now so all right so we can remove this background color if we want and you'll see it looking pretty uh it looking like that pretty much about handing remove this border to and we'll remove it to something pink maybe pink so you see it the looking like that layout wise but yeah okay so now you'll see that we have selected a lot of tags and we have did a lot of formatting so far uh, so now let's get to the projects thing or maybe let's stick to these for these sessions. Uh, let's format these better now. Uh, so what we want now is to have this a little bit space. This ping box. What is this ping ping box? Let's back to the go back to the editor. The ping box is the links box. So what we need is it to have a margin, a little bit margin, and we want it to have a font size of good font size as well it's pretty small so you, we can use a font size property and we can do something like 32 pixel font or something yep so it is pretty huge for now let's go with 26 
26 looks cool. And what else we can do is we can just shift the ping box. We want to shift the ping box a little to the right because it is pretty, it is sticking to this uh, window. Uh, so let's do this. Yep. So we can do that by margin, margin left. We want the margin at the left. So 30 pixel maybe. Let's try this out. 30 pixel looks good so far. And we need margin top as well. It is sticking to the top too. So we can add margin top. We can use 15 pixel maybe. Okay, did I do something? Uh, okay, margin top touch, or we can add padding top. Padding top 15 pixel. Wait, this is something weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or we can add a little bit of top little thirty pixels. Mm -hmm. All right, I guess we are good now, maybe 20 pixel. So yeah, let's remove the background colors now, it looks ugly. So this is the site so far and we'll remove this background color too. And we can use the our real background now. Uh, what was the color code of this? So these are the hex codes of color. When you whenever you search on the Google like color picker or something, it can it will show you colors in different formats. There are RGB, hex colors, and a lot of stuff. So you can use hex or RGB as per your wish. So what we're going to do now is. We'll, we'll select body and we'll do a background color to it and we'll use our hex code. Hex code are written in a hash format. So this was our color. Let's see how it looks here now. We need to do make all the text white color. So we'll do this in body only. That color, text color, there is no property no call text color or font color it is just color so color white so it is uh, colored white now but uh, here the anchors the link tags are not white for now so what we'll do is we'll select all the a tags you remember the a tags were the link tags right and our links are empty for now HP says this, this is HP Pavilion Gaming. Uh, okay. So we can do color white. So these are white too now and we can remove the background color from here as well. So everything is white white now. All right. Yeah. So now what we can do is one is suspended, okay. And we need this background color. Now we wanna center it or we wanna just you know make it a little lower. So what we're gonna do right now is we'll give it a margin top, margin or top of uh, 300 pixels maybe let's see okay that is a lot 
that is not right 240 this is a lot to 200 200 is good 200 is good and now we'll increase the text size as well uh we'll select the h1 how easily hmm. so here is our h1 we'll give it an id of uh, name all right so here is this id of name and we'll select it by our hash thing name and we'll format it by increasing its font size a little right we'll make it 48 pixel maybe let's see how that looks it looks better maybe it will get more huge 64 let's go with 64 64 looks nice too and that thing below a web developer it can be turned into a span so whenever you want to group a text you can use something called span so here is a span so i'm going to close this in span because i want to format this in a different way than the rest of this text right uh, and i'll give it an id of with so now right where is this where was this before? we were here where is this heading the heading is home my car home info all right so we'll add another property We'll add property vector here. Mm -hmm. So font size will turn it into 32 pixel maybe. Okay, now it looks nice. We want it to not stick to the window again. So we'll add uh, padding is here. Padding right, padding left. We want padding left. So 50 pixel of padding will do maybe. Yep, it did the job. Wait a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. 50. Yep, so let's remove the background and see how it looks now. Uh, so it looks more than the original thing now. But still, there is the font is different and a lot of stuff is different. So we'll have to do stuff in here. But we are reaching there, I guess. All right. So now, what's the next goal? The next goal is giving some space in between these. So these are pretty stick also. So we'll have to give a space in there. And uh, else things are all right, I guess, on this page at least. Okay. So these are A's. And what we can do is we want these. These. This is the home thing, home link. And here is this home link. So we, we have to give space in between these, all right? So what we can do is we can say that A, we selected all the links and we can say margin, margin right. We can say margin right should be 30 pixels. So now instantly they were spaced out. If you didn't see that, I'll show you again. They were like this previously and we added a margin of 30 pixel and we saved it and here is the thing also the links are by default underlined and we don't want that underlined ugly looking text so what we'll do is uh we'll remove these underlines uh on our ourselves so what what is the thing is the thing is these underlined is text decoration so the whenever you want to underline stuff you use a text decoration thing. So we'll use text decoration and we'll say none. 
so now these don't have any text decoration all right so now this looks pretty neat so far and we need this to shift to uh, left as well so where is our logo our logo is img so what we'll do is we'll make it uh, margin margin right will margin uh, margin right to 30 pixels maybe so it has shifted to here now all right so here is the thing so this looks pretty neat so far we have to work on this now now get back to the about me page hmm. so here is our about me page about me page is pretty simple there is just one heading with an id about me heading and here is this content all right so yeah also if you have any doubts please feel free to ask i feel better if it looks like a discussion rather than me legit teaching you <laughs> uh all right so what we want next is we want to increase the size of this h1 this about me thing we want it to get more bigger uh bigger, more bigger not it's bigger sorry the uh, about me heading we want it to have a font size font size of uh, what do you say 64 pixels maybe let's see yeah 64 pixel looks nice now this uh, spaces look a lot looks a lot so we'll decrease them a little and we can say we just have to keep uh, we kept a padding top at 40 pixels yeah now it's look pretty looks pretty neat i guess and i'm gonna remove this padding too so here is this real thing so now we see that this is sticking to this border and we don't want that so what we'll do now is uh, there is the about me font thing. So what we'll do is we'll add a padding, padding in everywhere. So we'll add a padding of 30, pix 30 pixels maybe. So now the content is spaced out and let's increase the size of the content too. So let's go to the body only and increase the size of everything font size uh 32 pixels all right so let's write something meaningful in here Okay, so we type this in here and now, yeah, we type this in here, but the thing is the HTML doesn't know that we gave a space there, we left a line here, it will just uh, write this in continuation. So we want a, a line to be left here, so we'll use BR tag again, BR, BR, 2 BR, so let's use 2 BR, so what it will do is it will uh insert two line breaks so that there are some line breaks so this is so far what we have so i guess this looks pretty neat and now the next thing is making these links work these are links we know that but these are not working for now so how we can make this work is uh we will use internal linking now, what is internal linking? Internal linking is just that uh, that instead of you know linking your anchors to some another external page, like I did with Amazon.in, you link it with a section of your page. So now what we need is when we when I click on this about me, it takes me back to this this page here. So how we can do that is uh, every 
every element of ours has an id so what i'll do i'll tell this link this about me link to take me to this about me tag whenever i click on it so how i can do that uh, again that how we are using this id so far we're using a hash and we're writing the id name so same thing we can do in here i can just in place of the url link url i can just say hash about me so what that means is whenever i click on about me this thing it will take me to this uh, it will take me to a element which is id about me which is this so now now test this now let's test this now i'll click on this about me and it uh transfer me to this page so like same page but another section so that is some stuff in here uh also i want to decrease the size of about me content a little 450 pixel maybe yeah so now it's looking pretty neat so what is left now so the projects page is left but i'm not sure if we'll be able to complete that so i guess we'll focus on uh completing more stuff now the text the text that i use in here looks pretty bad you'll see like this is the most basic text that you can have in your thing so one thing is you can use google fonts so the thing with here like the css has a property called css let's use let's what do we use as an example let's use about me heading okay so i can say that make the font family here is the property called font family to something something maybe make it mono space all right i did this and you'll see it being mono spaced or let me do something else that is visible uh serif let's do some of this so you'll see the text change it will not be that visible because it's all caps uh all right mm -hmm. so the text change so text changes a lot but the thing is our local pcs don't have all the text so suppose a developer said that i want this text to be i want my website to be of this font family i want my website to be to have this text uh, family but uh, suppose that that text family is not installed in the user's computer so what will happen it will just not work it will just show up some random text family so what we do to avoid that we use online font uh, font files so how we can do that just search up google fonts and here is this like it is the shopping cart for fonts in a way so suppose i i can write my sample text in here as well about me and you can test uh, te uh, you can test which text fits better for this uh, piece of text okay all right so there are a lot of text and these text files don't need anything like if i am using roboto but my computer does not have roboto i can still use it because it is from online so it doesn't uh, depend on your computer's configuration or something so in my design i had my text uh, redesigned it is hammersmith 1 and i'm just i'm just search for it hammersmith 1 it should be here most probably and if it's not here then yeah it's here it's here yeah so here is the hammersmith one and there are a lot of these so i can just select this style and here is the thing now it gave me a little bit of code that i don't need to understand it just says that this uh, paste this code in your head head file head or tag and you'll be good to go and this font will be in your file so i am just uh, copy this i don't need to understand this i never try to understand this and no one tries to understand this so what we what I, what i just say is that this is the head tag and we just need uh, you to copy the code in here so we just copy their code in here and now we can use this 
uh, Hammersmith one font family easily. Like the, here is the syntax, how you can use this font family. You can just say font family and you can just say Hammersmith one with quotation marks, with a single, uh, single quotes or something. So the thing here is this font family name is of two words. So whenever it is of two words or more, like there is a space inside it, you have to use quotation marks. So that's why we are going to be using quotation marks. So what I'll do is I'll turn whole body text to font family, font family. Uh, okay. I'll just copy the name Hammersmith one. Control V, this is it. And we'll be good to go, I guess. Now it's our site will look more better in a way. Also, we had this in caps. We'll do something here. Yep. We'll make this in caps. That will look better about me. Home. Projects. Okay, we'll do this in caps to mono, mono system. All right. And yeah. Now, give this a font family. The links. You have to, you know, everything you can style with just saying that uh, every, everything that is in body use font family this and this but links are pretty weird and you have to you know specify their formatting on those like specifically so i'll just go with hammer i'll just copy the name again yep so now you'll see that it is looking better now also We'll remove this for now. Hmm. So I guess we're almost done because we'll have less time to cover the project section. Uh, so we'll skip it. The thing you like, if you just attended the full session, the thing you learned is, uh, you learned how to, you know, just you learn the big picture of how you relate HTML and CSS with each other. You use selectors, you use CSS selectors to, you know, select some HTML tags and then you specify formattings for those. So that is the basic stuff. And uh, yeah, also you learned, you learned uh, how you style text and how you lay out, how do you better the layout. Also, I have a thing for you all if you need. Like, this is a summary of what we learned or what we were supposed to learn in this session. And I think this will help you all because if you just forget or if you are confused in something that I just rushed over something and you are simply confused over something, you can just, you know, take a look at this and see what all we learned. And you can just search for it in a more better way. You can just say text align CSS and you can do all your research with that. Like I, I recommend doing that because this fast paced session will be was really would be really good to you know introduce you to stuff in a really uh, fast and non-boring way. But uh, I guess you still need to you know all get deeper. So these are the stuff that you can do. There is some CSS ritual. This is all the like it was a plan of how we were supposed to go through things. There is smooth scrolling as well. Yeah. So we can cover this, I guess. The thing is, where is our thing? Yep. When I click on about, we know it will take us to the about me page. But isn't it pretty sudden? Like when I click on about me, it just takes me there how better it would be if we if if it were to you know animate this whole thing and slide me over this page so what how we can do this we can give a property to the whole html thing Control Z. 
yep so what we can do now uh, yep we can give a property to whole html of scroll behavior there is a thing called scroll behavior and you can give a property value of smooth and now what will happen is what whenever your uh, html body will scroll it will scroll smoothly rather than like i do this about me like i don't know if you said notice a difference or not the thing uh, previously was when you click on about me it just takes you there instantly and nothing but now it just slides you over there so it looks pretty clean and nice so that is pretty uh, that is recommended to have uh also let's go thing so i told you that you can let's see recap okay so i told you that you can just put an exclamation mark in your index.html file and press enter and you'll see all the html boilerplate code in your file and there was a title tag which you can use to you know set the new tab names for tab names for your uh, html and there was style linking the style linking was this thing that you can link your style sheet this way that all the style that we are uh, writing the styles in a different file all together and how how it is still connected it is connected by this little code that you say link a relation style sheet style.css like i i am pretty sure that if you are new to this you will not remember a lot of stuff and you will be pretty like uh, what just happened now like i see a stuff happening uh, like like in front of my eyes but i don't remember a lot of stuff now so that's why i gave you a little uh, recap about what all we learned and there was style linking we are done with that and there were headings you can have a lot of levels of heading there are h1 h2 and you can h1 to use uh, to for bigger headings h2 for smaller headings so that kind of stuff and images are there as well so images are the syntax is similar that the images syntax is you just also this thing to notice here is like if i don't know if you if you should have asked but uh, the thing here is there was this image tag but we never closed it so the thing is the image tag doesn't contain anything so it uh, so there is no need to close it so image is self closing tag you don't need to close it while divs are like you open a div and then you close it up because you have a, a, a stuff in there you have to contain you have to tell computer that where my div is starting and where my div is ending but that's not the case with tags like image and tags like br br is also a self closing tag and you don't need to close it so what do you use to make your website pretty design it it is figma figma uh yeah this thing this thing right who asked i'm not sure yes yep yeah this is figma you can prototype your design in there so like this was this seems like pretty heavy session and uh, suppose if i weren't i wasn't planned about how to go with things then just imagine how messy it would have been so i was you know uh i was supposed to plan what all i need to build in at this time so yep so we went through that and images are done and links we also know that uh, links are used by a tags we here here is the example of link can you close your ng tag bro no you can't because there is nothing in there so like it is i am not sure if it does it will work or not maybe you can try that or i should like the thing is html and css are pretty forgiving like uh, if you if you do a error like that in c++ it will just show a error and not run these are legit programming languages html and css are pretty forgiving in their syntax and stuff and it will it it will it will not give you an error but it will act weird at least if you just do something uh, unusual so i i think if you just try to close your image tag it will not do anything but it will act weird at least i would say 
uh, yeah, the A tag we were talking about. Here is the A tag about me. So this is an internal link. There is an href thing, and we add a URL in there. So what we did is, uh, yeah, we added a URL. Uh, there is hash in, yeah. So we said that go to the section, go to a element where the ID, the hash denotes ID. So where the ID is about me. So it went there. That is internal linking. Now we can show exa an example of external linking as well. We can just do https www.amazon.in like the old example that we used. And now let's get back to the website. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So yeah, when I do about me, it takes me to the section of that page only. When I do projects, then it opens up an Amazon.in link. So that is internal and external linking and we uh, learned about that. And there were lists, we were supposed to do that, but it is pretty simple stuff and you just search list and you'll know what it is about. It is not that hard. We were supposed to use links when I was about to do this, like this tools I use thing, but uh, we didn't get much time to touch upon that. So we'll do that some other day maybe. We can have an just normal session on Discord maybe. Yeah. And line break the attack. And now let's come to the CSS, what we learned in CSS. The CSS ritual that always whenever you start your CSS styling, make margin and padding zero. This is the compulsory thing. And also a bonus thing is you can turn your box size into a border box. Like this can be your uh, home book or something. You can research about why it is necessary and stuff because it is an uh, important thing. And we learned about background color, how we set our body's background color. Uh, here is our body. And we set the background color using a hex code. This is the hex code of the color that we were using. Like we wanted a specific color. So that is there. And introduction to IDs and classes and CSS selectors. So yeah, CSS selectors are like you can select elements using their IDs, using their classes or just their taggings. Like I gave you an example in the starting and CSS units, we were introduced about the VH and VW. VH is the viewport height and VW is viewport width. Like whatever, like if I decrease my window size like this, then its viewport width will change. And when I maximize it, its viewport width will, you know, get bigger. So we use VH and VW so that it can adapt to the changes to the window size and the device size indeed. Like if I use phone and if I use a, a computer, then viewport heights and viewport widths are pretty different. And there is pixels that does not depend on anything. It is just pixel. Like there is centimeter in our thing. It is the pixel is a centimeter of theirs. So that is thing. Big percentages are pretty cool too. You can search about them. And sizing properties, we learned about sizing properties like height and width. We 